Kevin, welcome to the Jigsaw Files, the Saw Dedicated Podcast. It is an honor to have you on. Uh, how are you doing? How are things going? Uh, things are going incredibly well. It's like a high moment in my life right now because we've uh, we shot Saw X, we I edited it, and I've, I'm done with almost all the hard stuff. I just finished Tobin's ADR, you know, his uh, the re-recording of lines that we need from him and most right. of the other cast. Uh, I'm in the middle of working with Charlie Clauser on the score and working with uh, Switch FX in Toronto on the visual effects for the film. And we've got our Toronto sound team and uh, color team putting the, the, you know, the sound and the picture together. And uh, I'll be heading up to Toronto in about two weeks to finish the film over, over about three weeks up there. Uh, okay. So I'm incredibly happy with how the film turned out. <laughs> I hope everyone else will be too. I, I, I think you will, but you know, maybe I'm just high on my own supply, but uh, I feel really good about it. All right, so there you go, guys. There's an update on the status of Saw X right now. I know things have been kind of quiet, so people were probably unsure. So thank you for clearing that up. Um, so, yeah, for those who don't know, you've been in the Saw game since the very beginning, in some capacity. Uh, you were the editor on 1 through 5 and Jigsaw. You directed Saw 6, Saw 3D, and the upcoming Saw X. Um, yes. So, yeah, you've pretty much been around for all of them. So, uh, for those who might not know, can you talk about how does the editing process work? Like, does the director come in and give you, like, direction on how he wants the scene to play out? Or do you kind of, like, do your own thing to where it kind of meshes together well or what was written in the script and all that? So, like, how, how does that whole process work for those people? Well, in, in a situation uh, which is pretty typical where... There's one editor who's, um, you know, dedicated to the to being the sole editor on the whole project, which was the case for me on one through five, and um, and uh, uh, Jigsaw. You, you discuss the film with the director before they begin shooting, and then uh, you officially start work when shooting begins. And so okay. I'll get I'll get the footage every day the day after it was shot, and then I'll start assembling it together. Uh, rougher than the edit will be later on, but enough that we can see that things are working and that the... Right, you, like you've got an idea of where it's going, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, if, you know, everybody knows the script by that point. Mm -hmm. um, so the script is, is, is the template for how the film's going to be edited. And uh, But, you know, you can see if the performances are working and, um, uh, and, and you know, all the various visual elements like the production design and, and the quality of the sound and that sort of thing. So evaluating all those elements is part of it. But the main thing is getting the movie together so that by the time the director finishes shooting, there might be a few days before the assembly is complete and the last of the footage rolls in. But then you have a cut of the film. And I like to... Uh, to really put a lot of work into the sound design and the temp music, even during that initial process. So that uh, when the first editor's assembly screening happens for the director, it's not too painful <laughs> for him because frankly, watching that first cut, I know for me and I'm pretty sure for most directors is, is a very painful <laughs> experience. It's a rough. <laughs> you know, it is, it is a little bit rough because I remember on, on Saw 6 when I, you know, I was incredibly high on the experience of having finished shooting the film. Uh, and then when I came in to watch it, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with the quality of the edit, but watching it and seeing it shrunk down into a little computer screen was kind of devastating, you know, like you're, you're, you're so used to the the bigness and the sort of epic experience of working on a giant sound stage and shooting all these scenes and working with all these people. And then suddenly it all gets distilled into this little low quality video window. It's hard. It's really hard. And um, it, it never gets easier. Even, even, you know, on a film like this where I edited it myself, you know, that first cut is like, whew, you know, do we have it? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me we have it. Yeah. 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 But then, you know, once I start uh, digging into it, then it, it, it comes back for me. But in any event, uh, you asked about working with other directors and, uh, you know, where I'm where I'm editing for that person. 
And uh, yeah, generally, um, you know, it's it's the same kind of thing. You put as much work into that um, that first cut. Then there's a period of that's called the director's cut, where uh, that person gets to work on it without needing to show it to the producers of the studio. And uh, on a director's guild film like this, they're allowed ten weeks before anybody can okay. force you to show them the film. And then they show it to the producers and then the producers will have their feedback and then they show it to the studio. They have their feedback and we spend anywhere from three weeks to infinity re-editing <laughs> a film. You know, in the case of soft films, we generally have a release date in advance and it's quite close. So we can't screw around for too long, but I've been on films where we edit for a year after we show that director's cut. So anything's oh, possible. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, being a part of the whole Saw legacy, like I said, you've been around since the very beginning. What does uh, being a part of that legacy feel like for you, from your perspective? Well, I mean, it it feels amazing. It it changed my life. You know, Saw One was my first editing job, my first real feature film editing job, and Saw Six was my first directing job. So, um, you know, it's it it really did change my life. Who knows what I'd be doing if I hadn't gotten that job back in 2003. So, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. And, you know, I'm proud of the franchise. I know that the, 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 the movies have their ups and downs, but, um, you know, we're on, we're on a high note now. So, uh, yeah, it's a great, great saga to be involved with. And, I, and I'm sure a lot of people have asked you to for editing or directing, but I'm going to spin that question a little bit. Um, did you start out already wanting to direct and just use editing to kind of like get, get your foot in the door or did you it was was directing something that kind of came to you as an idea a little bit later on well i i wanted to be a film director since i guess high school and i went to film school while i was in film school i um you know i'd never really thought that much about editing but as i did it on student films i saw that this was something i really enjoyed and uh uh, my first work, well, my work for a long time when I got out of film school was in editing. So uh, during that period when I was really assistant editing, I was writing scripts and trying to get the script sold or to direct them and never really hit, uh, you know, got some got some interest in things, but nothing that ever took off. And so once uh, once I was doing Saw and, you know, James was a first timer, Darren was a first timer, David was a first timer. Um, I was like, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And, it's uh, my turn, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, because I I worked on Saw one through three that were so uh, successful and, uh, you know, I wound up coming in and doing some uh, some editing on Saw four as well. I was able to parlay that into being able to direct Saw 6, if I edited Saw 5. So I had to wait a while, but it was worth it. All right. I, I, I absolutely agree. Um, and speaking of some of your editing work, uh, you have the collection, Marcus Dunstan's collection, yeah, yeah. Um, and The Strangers, the first Strangers, two very different films. Uh, one's a, you know, a lot more crazy and chaotic, and then you got one that's very isolated and builds up the tension. Um, so you as an editor, what was it like working on those two diff different films? And um, like I said, one's more chaotic, one's more, you know, of a slow build. Uh, what right. was that experience like? Well, uh, uh, The Strangers was, um, you know, it took it took a while for us to really figure that that movie out, you know, because it's it's got kind of a slow burn and the, 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 the it's not really that plot driven. It's more about situations and characters and that sort of thing and finding the tone and you know sort of inventing what the feeling of that movie was going to be it really did take a while and uh yeah. you know we did we did several different test screenings and uh you know brian brian tried a bunch of different approaches to the movie as a whole and uh it, it changed a lot over the the course of the edit um you know even even the story as it's perceived we reconceptualized a lot of things having to do with uh, oh, okay. Liv and Scott, you know, what, what they're doing. And, you know, we changed a lot of their dialogue to, to sort of redirect the attention in different ways. And um, uh, it was, it was, it was fascinating to, to change a movie that much. I've always kind of enjoyed that, 
you know, it's, it's, it's a little harder in my own films because it's hard to get out of my own head. But when I'm, you know, have a little bit more of the objectivity of being just the editor, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty eye-opening just how different a movie can be from how it was conceived. So then the collection, uh, uh, you know, I didn't edit that one from the beginning. I came on um, after the film had been shot and, uh, you know, tried to tried to give it a lot of that kind of saw energy because um, it's, it is closer to a saw movie than to yeah. something that's so atmospheric as the strangers. Um, but uh, yeah, it was fun. And, you know, I, I brought Charlie Clauser in to, to be part of that because I figured he was the perfect composer for that film. And uh, yeah, he, he enjoyed it a lot and, you know, liked working with Marcus. Marcus is, you know, an amazing personality and uh, super, super fun to be around. So yeah, I mean, they were, they were, they were great. Um, speaking, where you mentioned one, one of your own films earlier in, in, the, in the answer to that last question. Let's talk about another one, Jezebel. How did that one come about? How did that one happen for you? Um, I had uh, I had met Jason Blum very early in the in the Blumhouse days, and uh, you know at one point I was attached to Paranormal Activity two, and then a bunch of shit happened, and uh, uh, but you know I stayed friends with Jason, and uh, the, he had this script written by Ben Garant, who normally does things like. Uh, the night at the museum and you know wacky stuff wacky comedies oh, yeah. um but uh yeah he just asked if i wanted to direct it and i read it and was like hell yeah and uh away we went so that that came together pretty fast that one of my favorite things about jezebel is just the atmosphere um even when like nothing's re really happening like because again there's the, the things are building up just like that setting the atmosphere and it's very isolated and i really enjoyed that aspect of it so yeah me, me too and it was needless to say sarah snook was fantastic yeah, yeah. <laughs> really great to work with i'm really happy that she's come so far and you know was in succession obviously and and mark weber was was a, a joy to work with as well so yeah I, I i really loved making jezebel i was yeah. i was sorry that the film didn't get a bigger release but there you are i i was late to the jezebel game i just recently watched it for the first time because i kind of just keep like forgetting it's out there because you don't really see it in like every main like if you go to like your local walmart or something like that odds are it's probably not sitting on the shelf so I, it kind of just slips my mind and then i'm like oh yeah jezebel um, well you know it's funny uh when i asked you uh a little while ago if this if this was going to be video yeah, I had, been, I had been wearing my Jezebel shirt. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. And so uh, when you said it was video, I said, "Oh, here's well, we're my Saw X shirt that was given to me there by the." Yeah, I like that. I, got, I, got, I mean, this is just a normal Billy the Puppet right there. But um. I was just going to say that the, the our our different teams down in Mexico, uh, like the sound team and the the art department, all they all made their different uh, Saw X shirts for us. So I have a big collection. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So yeah, as we were kind of talking about before we started recording, we were on House of Jigsaw together. Uh, the House of Jigsaw message boards way back in the day, in the early days of, of Saw. I, I've always been curious, what was that like for you on your perspective, knowing what you knew, watching all of us theorize and say all these different crazy things. And we were sitting there like you guys could not be more wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, it was it was all over the place in terms of uh, speculation. Um, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed House of Jigsaw a lot. I was very upset a lot of fun cancel but uh yeah i mean I, I i know i saved some of it um somewhere i have it's probably archived in a way that <laughs> who knows if i can right. even read it but it was it was just fun you know uh people people that are you know so into saw and and see the sort of intricacy of the story and liked talking about all that you know i, I did too yeah. I had to sort of restrain myself, of course, because I didn't want to give anything away. But um, no, it was it was awesome. 
yeah, it was really fun to like, because again, there's so much story going on and a lot of stuff with the characters, and we're sitting there. I remember we were talking about this in our Saw 4 episode that we did. The first still image that was released was of, of Donnie and, and Hoffman in that in that room with the ice blocks, but Donnie's face was like, it had shadow over it, so we couldn't tell who it was, and I remember all of us on House of Jigsaw were like, who is that? Like, what's going on? Right, right, uh, right. Yeah, that, that was fun. That was good times. Um, so... I want to talk to you about Tanidra Howard because uh, I was a big fan of the Scream Queens show on VH1. Mm -hmm. I've talked about that a few times on the show as well. Now, I, I was always curious on how this process worked. I've always wanted to ask you this question. Um, did you guys already have the role picked out for her by the time she won, or was that was the role chosen for her after you guys met her? Like how? Like what was that process? Like? Well, um, you know, filmmaking is a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I had I had the job. I knew, you know, several years in advance that I was going to be directing Saw Six, like before it, we even had a story idea for it. Um, and then at some point, I don't know, maybe a month or two before we started shooting, I was talking to Shawnee, and she's like uh, saying, "Oh, you know, we got this really great actress." Um, you know, to play a role in the movie. And I'm, and I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you know, the Scream Queens. No one told me about it. Like the whole oh. thing came and went. <laughs> and uh, she's like, oh, the girl's really good. And I'm like, but how could this even be? And she's like, and James Gunn and Darren were hosts and all this. I was like, what? This all happened completely under my radar. And, uh, you know, when I asked about it, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, just just find some some role for her. Oh, and okay. so they, they, there was there was no plan. There wasn't even All a plan right. for the director. But so I, I, I wasn't I wasn't sure on that given the time because I know they shoot that stuff like way in advance. So I didn't know if by the time that you had met her, if you already had the part picked out or like oh what, what no no. Was. And and so when I met her, uh, I was really impressed, and I watched the the show of course, and uh, thought uh, the opening scene is going to be perfect for her because she has. Yeah the intensity that, you know, you can be a really good actor and not be able to pull off a, a saw trap scene. It requires a ton of, um, a ton of the ability to emotionally project in a way that not everybody has. And you need, you need a face for it. You know, you need a face that's interesting when it's scared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it just looks silly when, somebody, yeah. you know, especially dudes, it's harder to find the people and, that and, are and, and I mean this in the most respectful way. So Tanitra, if you're out there, if you're out there watch, she's got the crazy eyes in that scene to where, like you said, things are really intense and she's got the crazy eyes going. She starts screaming. You're like, what is she about to do? Uh, I, so I think it's very effective her performance. In that yeah. Scene. I, I, I thought um, she and super nice, super humble person. Um, so let's talk a little bit about saw X. I know you can't say much, um, you know, these things are always kept in secret, which I really love and appreciate, especially in the day and age of social media and all these leaks. From, it, it, it's a mess out there. So I appreciate that you guys keep it pretty tight lipped. But um, it's been a while since you directed a Saw movie. So what was it about Saw X specifically, that, that whatever you can tell us, that interested you into coming back to direct this one? Right. Well, I, I really can say very, very little. But... Um, uh, they gave me the script. I'd, I'd heard about the script, um, you know, long before, like long, long before. I'd heard about the concept. I was like, hmm, maybe. But then when I read, I was like, holy shit, because I wasn't, I wasn't going to do it unless I loved it. Right. You know, I, 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 I really, really went into it thinking, what more can they do? <laughs> <laughs> and I read it and I was like, holy shit. And I, I gave it to my wife and it's like, can you read this and tell me? And she was like, holy shit, you got to do this. And so uh, I, I, I was thrilled. I was really thrilled. And uh, I, I don't think I was wrong. So, um, yeah, I, I would say by far it's my best movie, you know, and I don't feel that <laughs> about, you know, when I, wow. just because I just made a movie. So, um you know, I think at the very least it'll be, uh, you know, I, 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 who knows? I could just be blowing smoke out my own. <laughs> I think, I think it will be a fan favorite. Okay, I like that a lot. Um, so, 
again, you can't say much of anything, so, uh, but maybe you can answer this one. Um, will Saw X, I think a lot of people are, are, are wondering this, will Saw X, uh, in terms of visually and, and tone, will it look and feel like, like the roots of the Saw era, or will it have that more slicker and cleaner look and feel that, like, say, Jigsaw and Spiral had? Right. Um, can you can you well, answer that? I mean, it's, it's it's sort of it's sort of in the nature of of what the story is that it should feel more like the original trilogy, and okay. you know I've I've always felt when I work on a Saw movie that there's things about the franchise that I love and there's stuff that I don't like as much and my idea has always been do more of the stuff you like and do less of the stuff you don't like. That's what this show is all about. <laughs> That's what we do. And so I feel like this one landed in a in a perfect spot as far as as far as that you know philosophy goes. And um, so even though the first six Saw movies were shot on film and they have a kind of filmishness that uh, we haven't seen since then, maybe a little bit in uh, in Spiral, but uh, this this one is, I think it's the best looking Saw film, and it's definitely gonna feel like Saw two, II, Saw three, visually. Oh, yes. So yeah, I uh, I, th I think we I think we nailed it as far as the look goes and the production. So we we have a new cinematographer, a guy named Nick Matthews, who um, uh, re really nailed it. Did most of the camera work himself until he got COVID and had to had to do his work from Mark Burke's trailer with a remote video attack <laughs> for a few days. Yeah. But uh, we all we all got COVID at some point. And then the production designer is uh, a guy named Anthony Stabley who uh, uh, just brought so much to it. You know, we we shot in Mexico City and uh, you know used used what's there to to give it a a unique feeling that's still clearly a Saw movie, if you know what I mean. So, you know, just the team in general really did a fantastic job, so. Good, and I, yeah, I think a lot of fans were kind of wondering what that was gonna look and, and feel like, because like I like the clean, modern look of, of, of Spiral and Jigsaw, but when I think of Saw, I think of uh, the original trilogy era, you know what I mean? Like, And even four, five, and six and, and 3D kind of had that, that, that similar color palette and all that stuff like that. And that's what I think of when I think of the Saw movie. So I think a lot of us were wondering which one it was going to feel more and more like. So. All right, so now I got a couple questions from the viewers, the fans, because, you know, they've had a lot of questions too, but I got a couple picked out. So, I, I again, you guys were awesome in submitting your questions. There's no way we could get to all of them, but I did pick out a few that uh, I'm, I'm sure th these are safe questions. I feel like they're not Saw X related, so <laughs> they're all going to be safe questions. Um, the first one is from the Jigsaw Blogs. Um, says the post credit scene in Saw 6 that's featured in the director's cut. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with Jeff's daughter. Uh, do you remember what was originally planned for that scene going forward? Or what, was there a plan, or like what, what was that? Um, well, the, 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 the shot of the girl was shot by Darren for Saw 3. And uh, she was singing You Are My Sunshine, right? Ooh. Like sort of to herself, like to comfort herself, and you know, to be honest, I can't remember why it didn't get. You. Did it get used? It wasn't in the. It wasn't it, in no, three ever. Not even. No, the, it, it, it didn't record. come back. But there are a lot of people speculating, and this is kind of what what makes the most sense to me is, uh, you know, Amanda comes in and tells her, "Don't trust the one who saves you." We know that's Hoffman. Um, the only thing I can really think of is that she's the one who told Perez about Hoffman. Right. And that's why she's so suspicious of him in Saw Six. That's right. what makes the most sense to me. But uh, I didn't know if you got if you had a different answer for that. So that no, that was that was the idea, you know. Oh. So I I don't I don't remember how I got the idea, but I was I just remembered that shot, and how cool it was. And I was like, what if that's Amanda's POV, and she Amanda sort of sees something bad is coming, and she might die, and does this as a kind of way to stick the knife into Hoffman and twist it. Like, like a last uh, resort type of thing, yeah. Exactly. And so, um, you know, once once we had our cut of the film, the the producers and studio didn't want to commit to that being ha what happens to Hoffman. 
right? Okay. And so they didn't want it to be in the theatrical, but they, they let me put it in the director's cut. And uh, so it's there, but obviously it wasn't really pursued as a concept. It's sort of just okay. a outside of Kane and, you know, little detour. But, uh, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad it's at least out there in the world. Uh, Daphne Van Harten wants to know, do you have a particular favorite scene in the franchise? Um, well, pre-Saw X, uh, I think, at least of my own films, the carousel scene. Is, I love uh, that. It's my favorite. Yeah. So. I love that whole sequence. It, Charlie's music and like the, the flashing lights and the banter between the characters on the <laughs> dog pit, on uh, uh, the carousel. Uh yeah, William is great in, in that scene. Yeah, everything about that scene works for me. Yeah, yeah. It's um, so it, was, it was it was one of the hardest things I ever shot. Like we went. Yeah, didn't we you guys like shoot that over months? Like, didn't you have to keep like calling them back yeah, to like because because you know every time every time someone gets shot, their blood flies, and and you know whenever you have a a gun shot or a, a squib pack of blood blowing up, you know it's a big deal on a set. So we were. We were constantly having to like there. There were probably over two hundred different camera setups in that movie because we had to keep coming back to like, okay, here's here's the close up of um, you know M Melanie before and after so and so gets shot, and here it is before and after so and so get. So we had to like keep going around and around and doing the, it. It it just took forever. It was it was hard, and you know of course the actors all have to be pumped up, and you know coming back again and again and again to those performances. Uh, it was hard. It was really hard, but the proof's in it the pudding. I, li I, like, I like the um, the steam room quite a bit as well, too. I really think that Carolyn Cave, the actress in that scene, um, gives, a, gives a really passionate performance, and William, of course. Uh, and then from the other films, you know, obviously the reverse bear trap is probably the seminal saw scene. Like, yeah. that's the scene that'll go in the time capsule and Blast it out to Alpha Centauri, I think. But um, uh, yeah, the carousel. All right, that's a great pick. I uh, have a new Colin. favorite, but I can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, Colin Mosley wants to know what was the most challenging scene for you to either edit or shoot? Well, again, I have one that um, uh, I, I can only talk about after Halloween, but uh, uh, the, 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 the carousel was the hardest. It was just really hard. Um, there you go. In terms of other stuff, though, uh, I mean, it's all hard. <laughs> you know, it's all hard. Um, you know, when you, whenever you have a whole lot of characters in a scene, mm -hmm. you, have to, you just have to get a lot more shots to make sure you have the close-ups you need for every line and for every look that they give to other characters and all. So, um, you know, that was another big part of why the carousel was so hard. Uh, you know, frankly, is... in, Saw, in Saw 3D, there was, there was some really tough ones in that. You know, that opening scene in, in that oh, plaza yeah. in Toronto. I, and you have all those extras there, too. So I imagine yeah. that, that was quite Yeah, tough. and, we, you know, we, we had 400 extras for that, which, you know, to me, I'd never worked with something like that. And I was like, well, that, that sounds fine. And Steve Webb, the AD, is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that is not fine. It's too big of an area you'll be surprised how quickly 400 people look like nothing. Yeah. So you really have to, um, you know, when you have your camera angles that show the extras, you have to put them in this cone of visibility to the camera. And so like, if you pan the camera to one side or the other, it's just gonna be empty. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But uh, that we, we, we definitely used the most blood of any Saw movie in that. Um, Cause we just had blood constantly falling out of the girl's stomach and, 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 you know, it was about that deep in that. Uh, so th th yeah, there were all sorts of reasons for that scene to be the hardest. Oh, and frankly, the one with, um, with Chester Bennington in that film, yeah. that was, that, that was, we shot that in the middle of Toronto winter, five days, five nights. So we're and all he's shirtless. Yeah. He, he's shirtless. And then that poor girl, uh, Gabby was, who was Gabby the, from season two. That's yeah. Yeah. From season two of the screen Queens. Um, you know, it was just, it was just grueling, you know? It takes a long time to do this stuff. A really long time. Uh, Madison Estes, we are talking about House of Jigsaw a little bit earlier. She was also on House of Jigsaw with us. I and remember, she yeah. wants to know, what were some 
Yep. <laughs> she wants to know what are some of your favorite wild fan theories that you've seen while, that, that stand out to you that you can still remember? Oh, people speculating what's going to be in movies or what hit, what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. Like like the craziest, the wildest one <laughs> that stands out um, to you. Boy, I wish I could remember. It's been it's been a while since I read that stuff uh, from House of Jigsaw. I, I can't remember a specific one. Do you remember when, like every year, everyone's like, "Drill Chair Jeff from Saw One's going to be the the real mastermind"? <laughs> Do you remember? That? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Adam is alive was was another big one. I remember that. Oh one. yeah, Adam. <laughs> all, yeah, there's all sorts. Yep. Uh, but yeah, she was just wondering if you had a particular one that stood out. And then Robert Warren, who was also on House of Jigsaw, says, if you could bring back any minor character in a flashback, who would it be? I think this is an interesting question because there's so many great hmm. ones. I don't know. I think, uh, I think Zep is a fun character. Yeah. And um, we, we talked about it for, uh, I think, Saw 6, finding a way oh. to bring him back. Um, that would have been interesting. You know? And well, William was not a minor character, but I like that character a great deal. Um, yeah, those are the ones that pop into mind. All right. Um, well, that's it. That's all I had, Kevin. And I don't want to take up any more of your time. I know you got a lot of work that you still have to do, and all, yeah. So I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to yep. come on Thank here you. and talk to us for a little bit, answer some of these burning questions that we've had for a while uh, that I've, I've been sitting on. I remember there was a couple specifically when you agreed to come on. I was like, oh, I'm definitely asking him this one because I got to <laughs> know. But uh, well, again, I, I really appreciate it, and I know the listeners and watchers appreciate it too. So thank thanks. You. Well, I, I appreciate you bringing me on. I can't wait to be able to start talking about Saw X. I bet. Um, I have I I haven't had a formal meeting with the marketing department, but I know they've been, you know, working on it really hard, and uh, so we'll see we'll see what happens in terms of trailers and posters and Comic Con or what whatever. I, I know that they're they're very engaged by this film. Yeah, there's a lot of people wondering when the trailer and poster and all that's coming soon, but uh, well, I, I imagine it's coming. It's it's all coming. There you go. <laughs> all right. Uh, so thank well, you, Kevin, very much. Yeah, no problem. I'll uh, I'll I'll see you around and thanks everybody.